Welcome to Digital Asset News, take your top stories in crypto and bring out a bite-sized pieces. Today, just like the thumbnail suggests, we're gonna be talking to a hedge fund insider. They're gonna give us some uh, pretty great perspective as far as what's going on. But first, we're gonna take a look at uh, Bitcoin, the price action as it pertains to 2016 all the way to 2022. We're gonna get into the big stuff with the hedge fund insider and their mentality as far as the hedge fund mindset. I can tell you right now, it is a lot different from the average investor like me and you. We're also gonna take a look at uh, his prediction for the bull run end time frame, and probably the most important thing as far as taking profits and this person's strategy as to how they do it as we're going to be asking him and some other people about taking profit strategy along the way and we'll be talking about that in a little bit so let's before we get all that let's take a look at what's going on into the market so today it is a tuesday a beautiful day market's up fantastic 2.23 trillion it's up three percent everybody's happy using trade the chain bitcoin daily sentiment 62 out of 100 you can't beat that and then as far as like who's going up or which coins are going up actually it's all pretty much uh, the big guy bitcoin hitting at four percent so not too bad bitcoin at 50 wow 51,403 said so it jumped like a thousand dollars just since i was uh, putting this together ethereum's at three percent binance coin in the third spot now four percent Cardano, uh, kind of under, underperforming, but doing okay. $2.20, two, uh, 2%. XRP, watch out, 3%. Solana, down a percentage point, and so on and so forth. So Bitcoin really pulled ahead for a while, and now the alts are starting to catch up. But I believe that Bitcoin's doing pretty good and should be uh, in a pretty sustained run. So that is what is going on. Uh, if you're a big trader, here's the projected range of the things to look at as far as sentiment analysis goes. Let me short, sort this out. Take a look at <laughs> Wink, Engine Coin. I own a bunch of that. Red Coin, StormX. I own a bunch of that. Ultra, VThor Token, and Hive. So let's take a look at what's going on with a little perspective. And this was actually uh, sent out as a tweet from my friend uh, Digital Dave over at Crazy for Cryptos. I actually retweeted the Trust Wallet. And uh, I think this is good to know as far as to get your mind straight. Because look at this. This is the price of Bitcoin. We know everything pretty much follows Bitcoin for the most part, not everything. But 5th of October 2018, Bitcoin was 6600 bucks, $6,600. Everybody thought it was dead. Then 2019, it was $8,200. So in one year, it went up just a whopping less than two grand. Watch out. That is awful. And then in 2020, Another two grand went up uh, 10,600, nothing to write home about. And then in one year's time, we're at 50,400. I will just say this in 2017, Bitcoin was at, I, and October wasn't 20,000 yet, but it was it was pretty high around, uh, I think around five or six. Check me in the comments. Not like it did too much. The big action comes around October, November, December. Maybe January, February. Uh, I don't know. But if you can take a look at this in October, just how far ahead we are. That's amazing. So things are going in the right direction. The thing that concerns me right now is I think everybody has a feeling that we're going to see some pretty big fireworks come around in Q4. I keep saying fireworks. I think it's going to actually happen. The thing I want to make mention of is that it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. So I want to bring somebody in here to bring a little perspective as to what is going on, what, what you can expect. If you've been here for any length of time, and I think a lot of you have not been since 2017 it's a good lesson just to see like how things could go so i'm going to bring on alex mascioli he's from trade the chain he was head of institutional investment at uh at b quant services and uh he handled uh multi-billion dollar accounts and he's going to give us a little, a little perspective as to the mindset of hedge funds how they are going where things are going and then how much it takes to actually manipulate this market and uh really it's all a bunch of whales and whale games uh what's going on can you be protected from this can you do this stuff yeah it's called taking profits and again uh this is not investment advice this is investment opinion this is what alex is doing this is also what i am doing i'm taking profits along the way and i'm trying to get as many people as i possibly can to talk about taking profits and how that works out for them and how they do things because on every other channel it's just buy and hold and buy and hold and buy and hold and i got to tell you i don't think that is the greatest strategy of all time for all time i think at some point you have to get into other assets and really just protect yourself and de-risk what is going on so without further ado let's talk to alex mascioli from trade the chain so everybody as promised I uh, brought in a guy who could give us a little bit of background. And uh, as you may know, this is Alex Mascioli, Alex Mascioli Show, uh, one of the co-founders of Trade the Chain, Sentiment Analysis, all that good stuff. 
Uh, Alex, thanks for coming back on the show to give us a little perspective. Thanks, Rob. Always happy to be on. Fantastic. This is this is harrowing times, right? Everything seems like it's going to go up. It's the moon and it's forever. And uh, we shouldn't be uh, uh, scared or anything like that. We should just let the whole bull train go until the wheels come off, baby. But I think that it takes a little bit of time to just uh, kind of step back and just get a little uh, of, uh, of lessons from history. So the first thing I was going to uh, ask you about, you had told me a story about when everything was going like crazy in the S&P 500. Uh, back in the day when you were uh, big equities and all that stuff and, and stock. And uh, what did you do at that moment when everything was starting to kind of like you could feel the momentum pick up? How did you ride that train all the way up? Because right now it kind of feels like we're kind of uh, going in that little direction here in the crypto market. Yeah, no, it, it was a, it was definitely a time where it was on the upward momentum. Um, and I wanted, to, I wanted to try something out new and it kind of goes along uh, with the dollar cost average tweet that Trade the Chain put out the other day. Um, and, and so what I did was I took the S&P 500 and I reversed it with the greatest losers at the top descending down. And so what I did was I packaged up a bunch of the, uh, the largest losers in the S&P 500, yeah. um, invested into them, and then watched to see what that performance would do. And it turned out to be 84% uh, over the course of, the following 10 months. So and that was, when was that? When did you do that, that, uh, that little uh, trick? 2011. 2011. Okay, fantastic. So everything was going up and you did that. Now that you've got, you kind of see the, the patterns and whatnot, what did you do here? So with Trade the Chain, which we use every day, take a look at sentiment analysis, you did the same thing. You flipped it on it just to see right. the sentiment itself. But then, and um, not, not the sentiment, but the actual, uh, how things were going as far as crypto, which were underperforming. So you did that, but you can't get into every underperformer and you also use sentiment, right? Correct. So what I did was I basically took the order, reversed it like I did in that S&P 500 example. Um, and then I went through and I compared sentiment to price loss over the last 30 days on blue chips. So things like ADA, Comp, Link, um, and, and basically selected those because for me, that was a dollar cost average. Uh, play right there. We all know where they've been. We all believe in the, certain projects. And so I just put put it into that. Gotcha. Okay, cool. And then I'm sure you'll do, at some point we'll get you back on. You can show us exactly how that works as far as with Traded Chain, but we kind of well, I did that in the beginning. Okay. So then the next question is, it's about your history over at, uh, at Bquant, head of Bquant Institutional Services. You worked a lot with the hedge fund guys, the big players, the money that was coming in, and they got into crypto, and they were all—they're still all excited, right? The thing is, is that I keep hearing the narrative that look, that crypto is going to go forever, or at least it's going to go for an extended period of time. Sure, okay, but then we take a look at well, which crypto projects? Because in my personal opinion, I think that the black hole that is Bitcoin could be sucked into MicroStrategy and never come out. That's what Michael Saylor says, and some other different players could do the same thing. However, does that mean that everything is going to keep going up, all the altcoins? And uh, how does that work as far as market manipulation? Because I don't think it takes a real big swing to manipulate this market. So talk to us real quick about the people you used to work with and their intentions and what their mindsets are. Because I can tell you right now, their mindset is not like my mindset. It's just totally different. Yeah, you know, so when I was a Bquant and overseeing about $35 billion a month in uh, crypto trading with hedge funds and institutions, you know, the, the mindset was, well, first of all, a lot of viewers here, are a lot of uh, long-term investors or midterm investors, theirs was constantly trading and trying to uh, produce strategies that generated alpha and beat the market. But what people, a lot of people also who watch didn't come into this market until let's say last year and, and, and a handful even this year. So all that they've seen is up. You and I, we cycled through the last event, which was 2017, going into 2018. And then we had three very, very long years of, of looking at each other and waiting to see what happened. <laughs> yeah, I, <remember laughs> I mean, stuff. I can't tell you a more boring three years in, in, in our lifespan. So as we go into this cycle, you know, when we're on YouTube or whatever form medium and we're trying to relay some knowledge of this is what we've seen in the, in the past and this is what we're thinking about in the future, it's coming from, you know, real world experience. 
Um, and, and you need to be able to uh, maximize your profit potential in those short spans of the cycle because you're going to have a long time between them to uh, really contemplate what you're doing in this space. Yeah. And then real quick, so it makes a lot of sense, right? But real quick, talk to us about the guys that you were involved with, those hedge fund guys. What's their mindset? Is it long term, big time investors and just stay and hold and hold forever? Or is it like max profits? So it's both. Um, you know, you look at different firms like Nidic, uh, which yeah. are they've always been since the creation of uh, their crypto group, long term Bitcoin holders and then trickling down into uh, other top assets. But then you take a look at uh, firms like Pantera or, you know, other various hedge funds where they're trading every day. They don't actually care about long term profits. They're looking for arbitrage on a day to day, week over week basis. So there's two different mindsets. I, I like to think that I'm a blend of both. Um, but there's definitely one side that has conviction and the other side uh, that doesn't. Yeah. And I think. It's one of those things where I think there's not a lot of pressure to move the needle either way as far as market manipulation. We're only at $2 trillion. It's not like the, I mean, the stock market can be manipulated. That's at $90, $100 trillion. So it's not that much. That's what uh, concerns me. And then the last you two think, things. You look real quick, Rob. Uh, apologies for interrupting. But, you know, right now, you know, $2.23 trillion around there. As we were speaking, uh, let's go back three months ago. That was almost $1 trillion less. Yeah. Yeah. And then like and then what what is the the big asset that's making the big gains? Bitcoin right now. Could it be that way forever? No, I think all kinds are going to do pretty well. But then as 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 people cycle through and investors, they're like, this is a little more safe and they kind of move into Bitcoin. I'm not saying that your project, you watch this is not going to succeed. I think there a lot of are going to succeed, but it's the long term. And I think it's the big thing that we have to get in our in our brains, which is we got to be careful first. It's not how much you make. It is how much you keep. And it's more important to have assets on the books than just to be there holding forever. And I can tell you from experience, it sucks. And that's how it goes. So that leads us to our last ones, Alex. Your predictions for this, this bull market. Are we going to see an extended bull market where there, this is the last four-year cycle where we're going to just keep going up and up and up? And then, you know, like a little bit of little bear, little bull, little bear, little bull, more bull, little bear. Or is it going to be, there's going to be like a little bit of a, of a stop point at some point. Yeah, you know, six months ago, um, I was definitely preaching, we're gonna go, we're gonna have our second leg up, we're gonna run into uh, the first quarter of next year in this bull cycle. We've had a great play coming out of this, out of the uh, late spring bear cycle of having that little bull, little bear, little bull, there's a lot of, a lot of profits to be had in that, in that <laughs> market. Yeah. Now, I, we're in October. And we're, we're not back to where we were, but yet we're going in the right direction. So with that, I've over the last uh, week and a half, two weeks, uh, corrected myself a little and, and just shortened the timeline. I think we're good until the end of the year. I think it's going to be a steep climb up uh, through the October momentum. But then I think it's going to cut short at the end of the year. I do not think we're going to bleed over uh, into a bull run into 2022 with with any great length. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully we're both wrong. I can see it going to February, January, February, and then we kind of tail off maybe even March. I don't know. But uh, the big thing is, and this, this really is the last one. Sorry, I forgot this one. This is the most important one. How do you take profits? And I'm trying to get a, a sense from different people and their perspectives to give these to my subscribers. How do you take profits to make sure that you are in the game uh, when everything's going crazy? Yeah, absolutely. And and you can attest to this. I can attest to this during the last cycle without taking profits. We held on to what we had for those three long, boring years and there was nothing we could do for it. Um, what During the summer, you know, what was created was that the ever famous uh, Monday, Tuesday sell off followed by a run up. Monday, Tuesday sell off. It was a step and repeat process. Almost you could set your time to it. Um, during that uh, process, what I would do was I started entering positions on Tuesdays and a little before that it was Mondays, but it, it went into Tuesdays and I started entering positions into Tuesdays and I would start uh, de-risking my holdings come Saturday. And I want everybody to know this. I have a base, a core of long-term investments, but I also have a pool 
that gets swing traded. And that counts for everything, whether it's the ones that people are passionate about, VGX, mm. StormX, but also other ones where I see opportunity and sentiment um, and other things. But that's basically what I did. And I would de-risk every Saturday. I would pull cash out, go back into the positions on Tuesday and pull cash out again that following Saturday. I've done that every single week for the last 10 plus weeks. It's crazy. And then whatever you want to do with the cash, you can go back in, you can do it, you can put in assets, whatever else, and you can kind of de-risk yourself. Got it. All right, Alex, thanks for, for stopping by. I appreciate it. If you want to check out Trade the Chain Sentiment Analysis, the link is always in the description. There's a link, looks just like this. And then you can check it out and uh, uh, talk to everybody. And the big thing that, sent that Trade the Chain does is community, not so much about the uh, sentiment, which is great, but learning from everybody else. Alex, any uh, last words of wisdom for everybody? Absolutely not. Just make sure you take profits when you can. Sounds okay. good. <laughs> All right. Perfect. All right, everybody, let's jump back. All right, and that's it. And then I just like, first, Alex, thanks. I appreciate it again. Just like Alex was talking about, it's good to take profits, have things in the sidelines, but it's also good to have other, other assets. Uh, for me, I love real estate and uh, I take profits out and I purchase real estate, down payments. I do short-term uh, rentals for uh, Airbnb and, and VRBO or Verbo, whatever they call it, Verbo. And uh, that works out uh, pretty well for me. Also, I'm getting into a little bit more safety uh, as far as like an uncorrelated asset, which is art and artwork. And I am uh, I'm already signed up for Masterworks and they use a fractionalized uh, type of system where they fractionalize multi-million dollar paintings. And over time, and I'm talking time, I'm not talking about like six months, I'm talking like three years, four years, five years, up to seven years. Uh, since it is uh, uncorrelated, uh, it depreciates pretty well. We're taking a 16% and it's just a safe, it's just a safe haven and another uh, avenue. You can take a look at that and what I talked about as far as this link in the description, I'll be doing a deep dive in that later. You can check it out and do your own research. But then on top of that, I also want to make mention that we are going to be uh, having, uh, I'll be on the show, The Conscious Crypto Traders, and they're going to be going over their methods. These ladies are uh, ex Forex traders, uh, real hardcore. They kind of soften a little bit as far as like uh, what they do as far as taking profits and just to see how they do it. So I'm gonna be on their show. I'm gonna ask them these questions as far as taking profits and, and uh, trading and whatnot, just to get a grander perspective about what's going on. And then we'll have some other people on to help you guys out. So that is it. So look, if you uh, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. That always helps. Consider subscribing. If you like these types of videos, it's always great. Time sensitive, all that good stuff. But that is it. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.